Hey guys, I'm Alex and this is Finally Functional. In the last video, I shared some improvements I made to make the motion with the VR shoes smoother. And I also went over some problems that the VR shoes are having that I'm gonna have to overcome. In this video, I'm gonna go over my solutions to those problems. All right, so the first and biggest problem is wear and tear. So some parts on these shoes, like the gears are already getting a bit worn down. This part I've had to replace a couple times It's because it's broken and the buttons on the top of the shoe. So, the buttons right here. I've had to replace those a couple of times. So my solutions for the buttons is to replace them with capacitive sensors. Capacitive sensors won't stick up out top, out past the top of the platform, so they shouldn't get damaged. And um, I'm gonna try to reduce the part count on these. I'm gonna try to get rid of most of the gears and go to belts or chains. So reduce the part count overall because then there won't be parts to wear down. And then I'm gonna try to make the whole shoe more durable and lighter at the same time. So this platform, this like test frame is made out of TPU. It's flexible filament and it's very impact resistant. I can hit it and I can actually throw it against the floor and it'll be completely fine. So this is very durable but it can't really maintain my weight very well. So that's why I have these metal bars going across so that it maintains its shape under a heavy load. And I've done some testing and it seems to hold my weight pretty well, but there are some problems where if I shift my weight while it's on this thing, then these, uh, like, ah, these supports can move back and forth. So I have a little bit more work to do with refining this design, but I think it's a really good way to make a really durable frame and a light one too. Oh, and as you can see, I might bring omnidirectional movement back. I'm trying out some omnidirectional wheels here. And the next problem, as explained in the last video, but when I'm in this harness, my pivot point isn't right above my head. It's behind me slightly. It's right here. Uh, so I need to pivot around this thing instead of just pivoting like this, because I don't want these ropes to hit me in the back of the head. So I'm experimenting with a couple of different harness designs and here's one of them. This one, I can stand right underneath it and my pivot point is right above my head. So it feels much more natural. So I might do something like this. I'm gonna improve upon this, but this is the, the general idea. I've also started experimenting with a more rigid design. So it pivots like this and it would keep you held in place better might be better for a more passive VR shoe where you need the thing to hold you rigidly like a slide mill does. I'll be going over this and other rigid designs in a future video. So those are some of the improvements I'm planning on making. I have an article link in the description if you want more details because there's more improvements I'm making and there's more things that I'm considering. So there are so many improvements I want to make to the shoes, making them more compact, lighter, more durable, less part count. There's so many things that I don't want to do it all in the next design, so I'm going to break the next design up into phases. The first phase, I'm not even going to have a motor. I'm going to really get to this durability change down, and it's going to be a more passive shoe. I'll probably add omnidirectional movement back in, and with this passive shoe, I'm going to see if I can make the shoe feel kind of like what a slide mill would feel like, because I've watched a lot of videos on the Catwalk C, and people like their Catwalk Cs. So if I could make a VR shoe that can do what the Catwalk C can do or any slide mill can do, deliver that same experience, but in a much more compact form, I think that'd be really cool. So first phase, I'll work on making this durability change really great and making it more compact like it is now and lighter and a bunch of other improvements. And then I'll add the motor in later and I'll have a passive VR shoe that feels like a slide mill, hopefully. So if that's all you want, and this would be a much cheaper VR shoe to put together, then just make this shoe. If you want a more natural experience, then make the motorized shoe, but it'll cost a little bit more. I wanna make multiple versions so that uh, people with different preferences can have a version of VR shoe that they prefer. Additionally, I haven't really focused on making the harness setup better. You saw I'm starting to do that. I'm gonna do a lot more of that because there are so many different harness setups that I have in mind and that people have told me about and I wanna try them out. So what do you guys think of all the changes I'm trying to make? Leave a comment, let me know what you think. I really appreciate the feedback and that's it. So like and subscribe, 
I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.